On today's episode of Cheap Chinese Batteries, we have the Cycle In Bat. And this thing is only $133 and it's only 20 pounds. And they claim low temp charging protection and lots of other features including 15,000 cycles. Uh-oh, that doesn't seem right. Overcurrent and short circuit protection. Uh-oh, it says 5,000 cycles down here. You guys might want to fix that. That's not 15,000. And then it says grade A lithium iron phosphate cells. But for how much I bought it for, I doubt it. So we're going to do some testing. First off, I did a capacity test. And if these are grade A cells, they should pull over 100, usually 103 to 106 amp hours, sometimes 108. And I pulled 100 points. So that's a little fishy. Next, they claim overcurrent protection. It says 100 amps of charge, 100 amps of discharge. Well, guess what? I charged it with 165 amps all the way to 100% after the capacity test, and it did not stop me. Now with discharge, it has a continuous rating and it has a surge rating. And the surge is 300 amps for five seconds. Well, I pulled 317 amps for almost two whole minutes, which is a tad higher than five seconds. So what's going on is we're tripping the over temperature protection. This does not have over current protection, but the over temperature protection will kick in eventually. But that's not what you want if it's rated like this. This is dangerous. And the over temperature Temperature should be the last resort safety feature, all right? If you have overcurrent protection, you should be able to pull this amount for that many seconds and no more. It should be able to shut itself down. Lots of more expensive batteries have that, but the cheap ones don't. So with the budget batteries, you always need to add a fuse. Semiconductors do not like high voltages and they do not like high temperatures. And pushing it to its thermal limit every single time is not good. You need actual overcurrent protection if you advertise it. Anyways, moving on. Tim's sensor is partially glued down. It wasn't attached that nicely, unfortunately. And then we have these that are soldered to nickel tabs and then welded to the bus bar. I don't like that. They're really slapping the glue on everywhere, which is okay, but it's pretty messy. And this BMS is so small. This has to be the smallest one I've seen in ages. Hey, actually, let's not remove this. Let's test the low temp first. Oh, nice. That was quick. Sweet. There's no name on this. Their other more expensive one is actually a JBD, but this one doesn't seem special at all. Just a bargain bin, Shenzhen BMS. Now the cells have paper between them. I like to see foam or insulated fiberboard. And the only thing holding them together is tape. Even on the budget ones, they'll use straps or metal clamps like the watt cycle. So it has potential, but I think they need a better BMS that actually has the advertised features and the cells, you need to get better cells. And if these are good cells, you need to batch them and charge them correctly before you put them into the case. That's also another issue. It could just have a massive imbalance. But yeah, not good, not bad. Um, it works, but it doesn't have the features that they said it has. And yeah, it's not getting 15,000 cycles to 80% capacity. But the balance wires are protected. And at this price point, it's nice to see this. And the low temp charging protection does work. Now, if you want to see a battery I recommend, I'll have it linked down below with my current recommendations. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.